Week three of the NFL season is in the books. Almost Monday night has not happened yet for me, but we saw Houston not only beat Jacksonville, but they whooped up on them 37 to 17. We saw Baltimore lose to Indianapolis 19 to 22 in overtime, and we saw Dallas lose to Arizona 16 to 28. Kinda got whooped up on by Arizona through three weeks of the NFL season. We the fans, we are Jon Snow. Not to mention, a team allowed 70 points to be scored against them, and they still don't appear to be the worst team in the entire league. I'm looking at you, Chicago. Welcome into the Fantasy Football Forge. I may have just burst my mic on that one. It is time to look at the waiver wire, and you, the fans, have spoken via your lack of viewing my waiver wire last week. We need to make this a quicker video, so it will be. If you like the longer version, obviously let me know in the comments. But let's start off with the injuries once again. Monday night has not happened yet. I will update the sheet that you are seeing on the screen on Monday night after the games. So feel free to uh, look for this up on the website, www.theffforge.com. There's a link down in the description to, to see any updates. If there was anything huge that happened on Monday night, I will uh, try to remember to come in, put any, if it's, if it's just a couple of changes, I'll put them down in the comments as well instead. So it's easier for you to find. I'll almost certainly do that. I usually do. So let's just follow up first up on some of the injuries that we have ongoing. Greg Dulcich hamstring injury was put on IR. The expectation is that he could be back in week six. Deontay Johnson, Jamal Williams both got put on IR a week later than Greg Dosich. So the soonest that we will see them is week seven for Greg Dosich. I believe they have a bye week, week five, or maybe it's Deontay Johnson. They have a bye week, week six. So that's the reason why one of these guys might seem a little bit off. Uh, probably Deontay Johnson. They have a bye week, week six, I believe. Saquon Barkley ankle sprain, uh, now it's going to be zero to two weeks. We know that he's pushing to come back, but that would not be normal for a high ankle sprain, and that would cause some concern for uh, what we should expect for him going forward if he does return that quickly. David Montgomery with that quad bruise could be back next week, could be taking a little bit longer yet. Joe Burrow, we will see if he plays tonight. That is trending like he will, or last night. It is trending towards the fact that he will have played. And so we'll see how that goes. Week three injuries uh, so far hasn't been too, too terrible. Jimmy Garoppolo uh, may or may not. He's been, he was evaluated for concussion after the game. We don't know the results of that, so we will see on that. Derek Carr, AC joint sprain. On average for a quarterback specifically, that's a two-week injury, about 17 days, I think it was. So that's what we should be expecting would be like two weeks, but it could be longer, could be shorter. Mike Williams torn ACL, uh, unfortunately, so that is a season ender for him. And Gus Edwards, concussion. We don't know if he has a concussion yet or not. Jonathan Mingo does have a concussion. We can expect him to be out for a week. So once again, updated some of these things. So maybe some changes from recent weeks. But over on the far right, this is the strength of schedule for the rest of the season. And so far right now, as of now, Jordan Love, Jared Goff should be rostered in most leagues. You know, it depends your league. It depends how much your uh how much your league teammates like carry on to quarterbacks is the waiver wire always full of them well then maybe it's a little less important to go out and get these guys but especially you look at uh, the next two weeks for Jordan Love solid guy could be a solid streamer if you're streaming too and uh Jared Goff should just be owned strength schedule is good for both of them could roster guys Matt Stafford CJ Stroud Derek Carr and Kyler Murray so um obvious for Matt Stafford CJ Stroud I think why they're in the could roster category maybe not the highest upside or there's some risk but a uh, guy like cj stroud been passing a lot etc as far as Derek carr and kyler murray uh, kyler murray is going to be coming off of ir soon don't know if he'll be back as as soon as he is back or not they're just both guys that if, if you're in some sort of uh, bad quarterback situation and they're available you can pick them up should be able to put them in an ir spot by the end of the week for a guy like Derek carr and uh, have them waiting in the reins, potentially, for use. And a couple of streamers with some good matchups, Andy Dalton going up against Minnesota. And then in the event that Bryce Young is injured for another week, 
Detroit right after that. So a couple good matchups there potentially. Jimmy Garoppolo going up against the Chargers this coming week if he does not have a concussion. Jameis Winston going up against Tampa Bay seems pretty good. Sam Howell going up against Philadelphia. Let's uh, see how Philadelphia did last night to determine if they're still a good matchup for quarterbacks and wide receivers. But um, they've really been banged up in their secondary. Let's move on to the running backs. And here's where I made some bigger changes to these things. So just have the waiver wire running backs right up top here. Devon A. Chain, I just dropped him. Um, half planning to, like there was a, a I would say, a 50-50 shot I was going to pick him back up. I put I picked up Ty J. Spears with the Derrick Henry thing happening midweek just in case. And I really didn't totally want to though because Devon A. Chain is the backup to my starter, Raheem Mostert. So, um, who, you know, injury concerns and whatnot, and Devon A. Chain's been my boy all off season. So that's unfortunate because, uh, looks like I'm going to have a big week out. Our waivers flip every week. So I'm probably not going to have a shot at getting him back on my team. And I drafted him quite highly, loved him. It's not the first time that, uh, this will happen to me if he happens to have a really, really good year. Kenneth Gainwell, we'll see what happens last night if he remains here or, or just becomes a stash. Roshan Johnson, every week it looks like we're one step closer to him maybe taking over this backfield. And uh, next week, if, if things were to get announced, he's going up against Denver, which uh, with no, you know, completely, I don't have to look at the stats, uh, technically speaking, is going to be the best matchup for running backs via fantasy points scored for sure, probably for some time after last week. And a uh, good strength of season schedule for Chicago for the running backs, though I don't know how much that matters with that offense. But um, still could be a starter on an offense uh, sometime soon, maybe. Here's a bunch of stashes. I have them in order of the value uh, that I like them. If you're not familiar with Keaton Mitchell, he's a rookie who I actually liked quite a bit too as far as his skill set, more of a scat back, uh, quick, fast kind of guy. But they might want that in Baltimore. When he comes back, had a strong off season from what I've heard coming off of IR. He's on IR for one more week, and then he'll be eligible to come back. He could become the starter there fairly quickly, so it wouldn't be a bad stash to have down there, but really don't know what the prospects look like for him. So that's why he's so low, but still, I think as far as upside goes, uh, he has as much upside as you know, Tank Bigsby, Zach Charbonnet, I would say given that offense that we expect to get better throughout the year. Free agents are just guys that uh, you might need help next week or something. I probably should have put who they're playing this coming week, but they're just generally guys who you might be able to use next week. We'll see them at Brita, but definitely not guys that you need to be spending any kind of uh, waiver wire value on, so uh, don't go ahead and do that for any of them, but we'll see who's healthy and who's playing next week for the Ravens backfield. It might end up making Melvin Gordon uh, a play next week. Once again, sorry I didn't put uh, who they're playing up against on here. Then for the wide receivers, we have my waiver wire slash high-end stashes. You can tell the difference because the stashes I don't have the schedule here for because we're not specifically thinking about playing them immediately. They are stashes. And uh, the waiver wire guys, I do have the schedule for. So Tank Dell, um, at this point, you know, he's uh, quite good. Something I should have mentioned for these stashes, by the way, there's about six or seven of them who have moved up into this group so far through three weeks of the season and you know guys like Devon Agent have had had success so this list has not been letting down so plan ahead take some of these higher end guys you never know if it'll end up coming through uh next week that they'll become really valuable potentially va valuable players and, and high end uh waiver wire targets next week so uh on to the wide receivers Tank Dell uh, he's played himself into the zeitgeist he, uh, what if it continues? He has a lot of upside, and I would say potentially more upside even than Romeo Dobbs, but it's very close here, and in the short term, if I needed someone, I would prefer Romeo Dobbs over Tank Dell going up against Detroit. It is a Thursday night game, though, so you know it depends on how you feel about those, and then Las Vegas after that before their bye week, so good there. Quinton Johnson, I think, has more season-long upside than Josh Palmer as a high-end stash, so that's why he's higher on the list, but if you need someone immediately that you plan on starting, Josh Palmer would be your guy to go out and get there going up against Las Vegas next week, so that's good. Then they have a bye, then Dallas, but uh, at least for one week here for sure, and then potentially season-long could be more valuable than Quentin Johnson, depending on how that uh, 
goes. Rasheed Rice, Marvin Mims, Wandale Robinson, just barely making this list. I know, going on a bit of an edge there, but you liked what you saw when he did get on the field, and if that can increase, given this offensive line, he's the exact kind of guy who could end up seeing a lot, a lot of targets. And then Marvin Mims, of course, we've seen um, through the last couple of weeks, it looks like they used him a little bit more, finally. So that's trending towards the good areas. Same with Rasheed Rice, essentially. Things are trending a little bit upward for those guys who, rookies, who we have a lot of hope for. Then for the free agents slash deep league stashes, Adam Thielen, by the way, is pretty much like assuming that Andy Dalton's playing, going up against Minnesota, is as high if you need someone to play next week. He is your guy, I think, more than anybody here. So just a heads up on that. Then they have Detroit after that. Bryce Young is expected to be back for that, I believe, but we'll see. Just a little bit of future potential there, too, for Adam Thielen. And same with DJ Shark for a couple of weeks. DJ Shark maybe a little less consistent of a guy, but the big games are great. Elijah Moore, Rashid Shahid, um, I think are always going to be guys that you could take off of the waiver wire. And same with Zay Jones if he's healthy, of course. Then Jaden Reed just wanted to mention that uh, expecting the weapons to come back for Green Bay finally next week, I would think that that will eat into uh, some of his usage, but he does have some value still as a stash slash emergency use kind of guy, but I I don't think I would try that next week. Jalen Hyatt, Josh Downs are my two like kind of lower end stash guys and that just a little bit below Wandale Robinson for upside for me, just uh, as far as Jalen Hyatt being a little less inconsistent and Josh Downs uh, probably on the same level as Wandale Robinson. Maybe I have Wandale too high. Uh, that's just my gut feeling, so that I split Wandale up here. So those are the stashes, and then these are all guys who any given week you could uh, give them a go and see how things go. Then for the tight ends, don't have anybody that you need to go out on the waivers for, by the way, this was ESPN ownership of guys 60% or less. So Sam Laporta didn't make the list. Good job, people, on getting him onto your teams. As far as streams for next week, Luke Musgrave's going to go up against Detroit once again. This is a Thursday night game, but uh, the upside's always going to be there, I think, for Luke Musgrave, and especially in a matchup against Detroit. Could come through for you. And that's pretty much the same for all of these matchups. Dalton Kincaid, Gerald Everett, uh, especially without Mike Williams out, we saw what Gerald Everett looked like last season. He was very usable with all the injuries to wide receivers throughout the year. They did add a third wide receiver in there with Quinton Johnston. But for now, especially next week, like uh, Gerald Everett could be a solid play going up against Las Vegas. Dalton Kincaid going up against Miami. Expect a lot of scoring between Buffalo and Miami. Hayden Hurst going up against Minnesota. Pretty easy team to attack. I do believe they've gone well against tight ends through the first two weeks. I'm not sure about through three weeks. I think they let up some touchdowns to Donald Parham, right? Maybe two of them even. And then Logan Thomas going up against Philadelphia. As far as DST streamers next week, it's not easy uh, in a lot of leagues at least to find someone as far as guys who are defenses who are owned less than 60% of leagues. These were the only two and best two that I even like could think of taking a shot on. Seattle going up against the New York Giants. Of course, uh, there's potential there that they could have a big game. Houston going up against Pittsburgh. They just had a, a good week. There's some potential there that they could have a big game. But for the most part, you probably have a better option on your bench this week or, or you know, your, your DST. So uh, there we go. That is it for the waiver wire. Much quicker. You're welcome. I believe you appreciate that. Bye-bye.